To keep up with changes in vehicle electronics, scan tools have become more and more powerful over the years and more capable of providing critical information. That's the reason for the succession of diagnostic readout boxes, DRB, DRB2, and DRB3. Now with the launch of a new vehicle communication system comes the next step in scan tools, StarScan. Welcome to this month's Master Tech. In this program, we'll start with a look at the new scan tool introduction, then cover how the StarScan operates, followed by some training tips. The StarScan is an essential special tool that will be used to support controller area network bus equipped vehicles starting in 2004. The new Dodge Durango will be first, followed by the 05 model year Chrysler and Jeep vehicles. Your StarScan will arrive at your dealership in a special tool kit in sync with the introduction of CAN bus vehicles. While the StarScan handles CAN bus equipped vehicles, you'll still need the DRB3 for some time to come to diagnose past model year vehicles, as well as current and future vehicles not covered by StarScan. Some of the reasons for switching over to a controller area network bus configuration include faster communication speeds and enhanced diagnostic features. Plus, CAN bus is the new industry standard, which is federally mandated by the year 2008. Be sure to catch next month's Master Tech for a more in-depth look at the controller area network communication system. Not only is the StarScan faster and more powerful, it's capable of performing web-connected operations, such as tool updates and downloading flash files. Because of its enhanced capabilities, the StarScan will not rely on the MDS-2 or Tech Connect to perform such operations as allowing the technician to view data recordings, downloading flash files, and updating the tool, along with viewing graphs of live data displays. The use of a full touch screen or keypad makes navigating the StarScan easy. The StarScan software uses a task-oriented approach to make accessing commonly performed operations faster and easier. Powering the StarScan is an internal battery. This allows the tool to remain on even when disconnected from the vehicle. Charging the battery can be accomplished a number of different ways. One is the battery will charge whenever the tool is connected to a vehicle. Another is the StarScan has its own charging transformer that plugs into a wall outlet and into the tool. To see the state of the battery, you can look at the status icons in the toolbar. These icons will give you the state of the internal battery, wireless signal strength, internet connection status, and vehicle connection status. Before we cover connecting StarScan to a network, let's clear one thing up. You only need to be connected to the internet for certain operations, such as downloading flash files and data recording templates, or updating the tool. Most other diagnostic operations will not require an internet connection. Satisfying the tool's internet requirements can be accomplished more than one way. One option is to go wireless. This option will allow for network growth in the future. It also eliminates many of the wires running along the floor in the service bay area. If you choose to go with the wired option, remember that there will need to be enough land drops in the service area to accommodate StarScan, Tech Connect clients, network printers, and future network devices. That wraps up our look at the StarScan's introduction. Now let's take an in-depth look at how the StarScan operates. Now that we've given you an overview of the tool, let's take a look at using the StarScan with a vehicle. Please note that the software you're about to see is pre-production and some screens may change slightly. The first step in using the StarScan to diagnose a vehicle is to connect the tool to the data link connector. The tool will always start at the home screen. This is where you will make your initial selections. 
With the introduction of controller area network comes a new approach to the design of the vehicle electrical system. Because of this, the StarScan offers three different views to the technician. Pressing System View will provide you with a system selection screen. Please note that these systems can consist of information from multiple electronic control units, or ECUs. We will be using the term ECU instead of module or controller. For a more detailed explanation of StarScan's different views, refer to this month's reference book. The second view is called ECU View. Pressing the ECU View button will take you to a list of all the ECUs that were built with the particular vehicle the StarScan is connected to. Since this view is ECU based, you will be communicating with one ECU at a time. Now let's take a look at the last view called Network View. Pressing on Network View provides an overview of the vehicle network. This screen can also indicate problems such as DTCs or communication failures by highlighting the applicable area in red. At this point, we're going to select the Body Interior Safety button to access detailed information of these ECUs that communicate on the CAN-B bus. Many of the screens we look at here are also used with other main selections. This brings up the Examine ECUs screen for that part of the bus system. This screen only shows ECUs on the CAN-B bus. You'll notice that there are three columns of information next to each ECU. Let's talk about those. The first column is the active column. Here, you will see either a green check mark if the ECU is communicating on the bus or a red X if it's not. Next is the DTCs column. This will show you the number of DTCs a particular ECU has recorded. The last column will tell you which bus the ECU is communicating on. Since we selected the Body Interior Safety button, we have a list of all the ECUs on the CAN-B bus. At this point, we can select any of the ECUs to investigate further. Notice the scroll bar on the left of the screen. We can use this to scroll and select the Electronic Overhead ECU, which brings up the ECU Overview screen. This screen allows the technician to perform diagnostic functions related to the particular ECU that was selected. The overview screen also displays important ECU information. By selecting buttons on this screen, you can view sensor and I.O. data, run actuators, perform miscellaneous functions, and view DTCs. The More Options button includes such items as system tests, ECU information, OBD2 monitors, and flashing ECUs. For example, if you wanted to view DTCs, you would select the View DTCs button, which brings up the DTCs screen. At this point, we can clear any stored DTCs by pressing the Clear Stored DTCs button. By selecting Yes when prompted, you can clear all the stored DTCs from this ECU. By now, you've probably noticed the Show Shortcuts button on the screen. They can make navigating the StarScan easier and faster. Pressing the Show Shortcuts button will bring up a new toolbar along the top of the screen with various selections. Note that when the shortcuts are displayed, the current screen is inactive until a shortcut button is chosen. Pressing the Hide Shortcuts button will remove the shortcut selection buttons. The purpose of the shortcut keys is to navigate to various functions without the need to back all the way out. Let's use the shortcut key Home to explore more selections on the home screen. From the home screen, this time we'll press on ECU View. Note that this view provides a list of all the ECUs this particular vehicle was built with. We then choose the Front Control Central Gateway ECU from the list. 
let's use this overview screen to explain the miscellaneous functions, which provide such features as setting customer preferences and adding features to the vehicle. Selecting an option and then pressing the Start button will bring up a wizard, which will guide you in making further selections. Now we'll back out to the ECU overview screen and press the Actuators button. Let's control the high-speed radiator fan actuator. We press Start Actuator and choose from one of these options to start the actuator. We'll use Toggle for our demonstration. Notice how the component icon flashes to show it is actuated. Pressing View Data will bring up associated information to the actuator you have selected. You can use the buttons on the right to arrange and graph the data. To stop the actuator, press the Back button and then press Stop Actuator. Now let's look at Data Display. In order to do this, we need to go back to the ECU Overview screen and select Data Display. The Data Display screen allows you to view both sensors and IOs on one screen. Using the buttons on the right will allow you to place items on a graph, isolate rows, or rearrange the display order. You'll note the most recent DTC will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. Now that we've shown you how the StarScan operates, let's use some sample scenarios to work through a diagnosis. In our first scenario, a vehicle comes in with a passenger side headlamp out. A mechanical inspection doesn't reveal any problems, so our next step would be to connect the star scan to the vehicle. We use Network View to check for potential problem areas and direct us to the problem. And next, we would select the Body Interior Safety ECUs button because a problem is indicated in red. We select the ECU that has a DTC set. It happens to be in the Front Control Central Gateway ECU. Next, select View DTCs. This will show us the DTC, whether the code is stored, active, or pending, and a description of the code. Pressing Environmental Data shows data pertaining to the DTC selected. For a more in-depth explanation of environmental data, refer to this month's reference book. We find the diagnostic procedure in the service information to isolate and repair the cause of the DTC. We can then use the star scan to verify the repair. The code should now be in the stored state, indicating the cause has been removed. Now that we have verified the repair, we press on the Clear Stored DTCs button. This brings up a pop-up box that reads, this will clear all the stored DTCs for this ECU. It will also reset environmental data for active DTCs. It also asks if we want to proceed. Pressing yes on this button clears the stored codes. The codes are now erased and the repair is complete. For our second scenario, a vehicle comes in with a passenger door window not operating. Our first step is to use Network View to help direct us to the problem. Notice that the passenger door ECU is not active on the bus, as indicated by a red X in the status column. In addition to the active status column indicating a no response issue, there is also a communication DTC set in the front control central gateway ECU. The next step is to find the diagnostic procedure on Tech Connect to locate the cause and make the repair. We then use the star scan to verify that communication with the ECU has been restored as indicated by a green check in the active column. During diagnosis, you may want to print some of the screens you see. There are two different ways you can print using the star scan. If you're connected to a LAN or local area network, you can use any of the available printers on the network. If you're not connected to a network, you can use the USB port on the star scan to connect to a standalone printer. Getting a screen print is as easy as pressing the Show Shortcuts button 
and then the print screen button. Well, that wraps up operating the star scan. Next, we'll look at some resources you can use to obtain more information. Look for future Master Tech programs to provide additional information related to the star scan, like the July 2003 program covering CAN bus, and the October 2003 program that looks at the new 2004 Durango, the first Chrysler Group vehicle to be equipped with CAN bus. Also, be sure to watch for an upcoming DCA training course on Durango Body Electrical. You can get additional information about StarScan by visiting the website at www.dcx-starscan.com. When prompted for a username, type in dcx-starscan. Use ADANCS in the password field. A new website currently under development will be available at a later date at www.dcctools.com. Always remember that many questions can be answered by consulting the owner's manual or quick reference guide provided with the toolkit. Well, that's all for this program. Join us next month for a detailed look at CAN bus operation and diagnosis. Thanks for watching.